Today I'm going to show you how to get your Broodminder Wi-Fi device going. It's uh, pretty easy, pretty quick. Uh, we show we have two different models, uh, one with an internal antenna and one with an external antenna. Uh, this one takes us a little bit more effort to put together. Let me show you this one because it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, typically we ship with the antenna inside the box just to protect it and it screws on and off really easily so do that you know don't overdo it you know, make it snug then you can point it up like that and then you'll want to either case um, you'll want to unscrew the four screws and take a good look at the gasket on this this housing is weatherproof but it's only weatherproof if the gasket's in there and if it's not twisted so you want to make sure that it's nice and flat and you can inspect that you can see it through the housing so that makes it nice uh, if it's off to the side then it won't work right okay and inside you'll see the board uh, this is the same circuit board that we use with our scales and a lot of devices uh, it's got a bluetooth chip on it and then we added a wi-fi board so you'll see that on the other one too and it's also got a button put on it and we'll talk about that button but it lets you do a, a manual scan so if you take the board out uh, you know be careful not to mash the circuit board it should just be sort of floating and hung by the wires which are pretty strong here so it's it's pretty durable but don't be a gorilla and then pull out the tabs okay and it'll if everything's good it'll start flashing you can see the flash here and that means that it's getting set up so I'm just going to set it off to the side here and then we will start this guy recording okay and then you'll want to be sure to use the newest broodminder bees app so that's the app we're using for almost everything now uh, and amanda did a great job on it and it supports the new wi-fi devices okay and i'm going to just look for nearby and i'm going to look for hubs um, no devices found yet okay so here it is 60 1001 and you can see another uh, older 50 device back in the back and I'm going to go to this and here you'll find a configure Wi-Fi button um, you know just push that button and scan so this will go out and look for all the Wi-Fi networks in the area uh, it only works with the 2G networks okay and Okay, it didn't find it. We have so many networks right here. It makes it a little tough. Okay, this time it found it. Bees on main 2G. Um, and it works with 2G. It doesn't work with 5G networks. So make sure that uh, that's the only ones it'll see anyway. Okay, and then we'll put in the password, which, whoops. Okay, we'll put that in, nice password for this place, and then we save it. Okay, and it will store that information in, in the hub then. Okay, now that that's stored, we'll go back, and we can see, let's double click on that. Loading devices scene 17. It sees 17 different devices along here. Uh, around here, I've got quite a few running. And we can say upload now. Okay, so what that did was just sent information to the network. Uh, once you get it set up, you should never really have to go into the Bees app again. Uh, everything will just run by itself. Even after you replace the batteries, it'll do that. Uh, and you can see it flashing here. When you see it flashing quickly like that, every time it finds a Broodminder device, it'll flash. So you can know that everything's going well and that that's working. If you want to do a manual upload, uh, let's say you're moving around the apiary and want to do that, you know, just push 
the push button and then let's see here there we go it'll start flashing quickly and it'll do an immediate upload that's sort of nice if you're like trying out different positions for your uh, Wi-Fi device it's got a long-range Bluetooth in it so it should be able to see you know 30 feet or so uh, from the sensors to the Wi-Fi device and then the Wi-Fi itself back to the house or the barn or wherever it is um, you'll just have to experiment with if you got a nice strong signal in your apiary then you know I would get this one it's a little cheaper uh, but if it's marginal get this one and I'll just say you know if you find out that it doesn't work you know let us know and you know you can return it and we'll come up with either a, a cell device or some other solution uh, apiaries are in so many different locations uh, we've got lots of options okay so after you get it and it's all running well and you've found figured out where to put it you know tighten the screws you know just snug they don't have to be super tight um, and then I'll do those other two later do the inspection of that gasket and just make sure that it's black all the way around it like this one is okay then once that happens you can go to your apiary and it will automatically find what apiary it's in and then move the device to that apiary uh, which is a pretty nice feature that uh, Rich Hogle and, and Amanda put in place once you have it running then you can go back and look at my broodminder and what you'll do is click on here and you'll see the device it'll automatically get assigned you can see I've had a lot of them here for testing but 601001 is this one and when you look at its graph then you can see a lot of nice stuff like the signal level which is the signal from the Wi-Fi device to your Wi-Fi router uh, you can see the temperature and we'll be able to assign that and the battery charge in it but the other nice thing it'll show you all the devices that it has seen most recently so you can see all the ones that it found around here and that can show you which devices you see which devices you don't see so hopefully that will get you going um, Rich, like I said Rich Hogle and Amanda Stoltz did a amazing job on getting this working we're really happy with it uh, the batteries in it should last over a year uh, we recommend the lithium uh, ever ready batteries and uh, if you have any problems you know let us know contact Mike at support dot uh, support at broodminder.com and remember that every hive counts